Welcome to OFC 21 Open Road and Virtual Booth. Uh, the booth number is 1863. My name is Andrea Fumagalli, Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering uh, at the University of Texas at Dallas. It's, it's my pleasure to announce the latest public demonstration of a fully interoperable open road and equipment uh, operating at 1, 10, 100, and 400 gigabit per second. Uh, this is an open solution that is entirely based on the functionalities that are defined by the Open Road and MSA. Uh, this demonstration also features the latest functionalities of the open source transport PCE controller, the multi domain PRONET orchestrator, and a network operations platform that is entirely based on open source software packages. You're going to hear about these uh, latest features directly from the scientists and the developers who made this uh, possible. Uh, I hope you're going to enjoy uh, their presentations. Uh, welcome to OFC 21 and Open Rodem demo. I'm Bala Balgangadhar Patula. I work at uh, at and Labs uh, and my areas of uh, work has, uh, has been focused on open rodem, transport PCE, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, software-defined networking. Uh, I think this year, uh, uh, compared to last year, has been a challenging uh, year with respect to 400G, uh, advent of 400G into open rodem, um, and uh, focusing on interoperability between various uh, uh, OEMs, uh, especially with 400G transponder and uh, MX ponder use case. Uh, uh, so um, I think uh, uh, you would find definitely find this uh, Open Rodem as an interesting session demo where, where you see multiple uh, vendors uh, operating uh, uh, and, uh, and also the transport PCE controller aiding, uh, helping uh, to, uh, uh, to support the 4-energy equipment. Uh, I think uh, working all th this in a cohesion is is quite uh, quite interesting uh, session, that, uh, interesting demo that we have this year. Uh, there are there are other uh, uh, good talks in this uh, year uh, uh, OFC. Uh, I think I would definitely encourage uh, uh, attendees to join uh, some of those, especially Open Rodem now a reality. Uh, talk uh, is uh, is where we share at and journey and learnings on how we were able to deploy open rodem equipment uh, uh, in the network. Um, and uh, 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 I think uh, moving on, the main challenge uh, is uh, is kind of uh, enabling higher bit rate services and or bot rates. Um, that poses a significant challenge, especially if you are developing towards uh, moving towards open standards. I think 400G uh, is, a, is a first concrete step towards achieving that goal. Um, uh, I hope you guys, uh, I, guess, I hope everyone have uh, a good OFC, uh, enjoy these, uh, uh, these sessions. Uh, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Shweta Lachani from at and I work in at and as a principal member of technical staff. My main uh, work or area of focus has been around network optimization and network automation. So this year we are back again um, with interesting demonstration of Open Rodem together with uh, UTD and Orange team. Um, this year's uh, demo is focused around beyond 100 gig functionality, um, including um, interoperability of 100 gig transponder as well as uh, 4 by 100 uh, MOX ponders. And uh, for this demo, we have we are using Transport PCE as our uh, Rodem network controller. Um, this year, we have uh, got support from different vendors and we have got the equipments. A um, few of the vendors are Fujitsu, Siena, Infinera, Cisco, Nokia, and Ribbon. And this demo will be showing interoperability of uh, open rodem models and equipment, uh, showing the data in the control plane. And with uh, together with this equipment, we are also having a flexible grid rodents. So uh, this demo will demonstrate the creation of service uh, using flexible uh, uh, spectrum. 
and uh, we have already augmented the transport PCE code which is available to uh, different service providers or whoever is interested it's an open source project which is available to open source community um, it, it's still uh, in progress and it will be available after the demo so that's a good thing and uh, transport PCE has also we have been we are a contributor as well as we are a user for transport PCE we have been using transport PCE for validating the open road models and you know finding some of the interoperability issue at early stage which uh, rather causes big delays during certification so uh, we are really looking forward to seeing you all and you know please visit our virtual booth and our demo will be available thank you transport pc demonstrates how collaborative development can help accelerating innovation since its creation in 2016 this project continuously extends its coverage initially providing network automation for the wdm layer OTN support was introduced in Magnesium. With the latest Open Daylight release, we introduced irate service provisioning. We are currently working on integrating Transport PC in our app and provide service assurance so that operators can leverage the platform to address the challenge of deploying modern interoperable optical infrastructures. I've been working in the Transport PC project for several years. Currently, I mainly contribute to the PC module which handles past calculations for WDN and OTN service requests. The introduction of higher rates such as 200 gig or 400 gig requires new developments of this central component to manage much more complex use cases. As a result, we will leverage the interconnection to GNPY developed for impairment aware pass computation to evaluate accurately the OSNR and the nonlinear impairments for higher rates, which is a real challenge for interoperability. Working with Giles and recently new committer, I will participate in the review process and ensure the good coverage of the test suits. My last developments inside Transport PC mainly focus on topology management and what we name inside the project the power mapping function, which is abstraction of data extracted from Netcom device and required by the controller, especially by the PC module for the pass calculation. Different abstracted views of these topologies can now be exposed and consumed by higher layer controller or OSS such on app to orchestrate automated end-to-end -end service provisioning in a multi-layer, multi-domain or again multi-controller context. As one of the transport PC committers, I'm also very sensible in keeping up to date our CICD chain whose keystone is our open random device simulators that guarantees that any contribution is smartly integrated. As the project technical leader of Transport PC, my role is to guarantee that the code proposed by different contributors meet the criteria of acceptance defined for Open Daylight. I must also ensure it is in line with a strategy to provide a reference implementation for the control of optical infrastructure based on open standard. The current CSID chain we put in place guarantees that any additional contribution does not bring any regression to the existing code. Transport PC follows the open daylight release train and we try to provide attractive features in each release. Initial contributions were mainly provided by AT&T and Orange. We start to see some interest from major equipment manufacturers as well as integrators. Any contribution in this scope is of course welcome. In this demo, we have a topology consisted of four cloudlets connected via an open roadmap network.
In particular, we have seven vendors, Siena, Cisco, Fujitsu, Infinera, Juniper, Nokia, and Ribbon. And we will have Rodems, Ocean Switch Ponders, 100 gig transponder, 400 gig max ponders, and 400 gig transponders. Transport PC manages and controls all the open Rodem devices in this network and provide various REST APIs for upper layer applications in order to implement multiple use cases in this demo. On the other hand, on the packet domain, we have Juniper QFX series switches that provide 400, 100, 40, and 10 gig connection to the open Rodem devices as well as our compute nodes. Furthermore, we have OpenStack expanded over our compute nodes to provide an infrastructure as a service within our cloudlets. And finally, we have Pronet Orchestrator, a network operation platform sits on top of the controllers to provision services and monitor the performance and operation of the nodes. Now we are going to take you to a tour in our lab to see the aforementioned elements in the demo. Hello, my name is Nathan Ellsworth from UT Dallas, and I want to take a brief few minutes and describe to you our network operations platform for our open road environment. I will focus a little bit on this deeper dive drawing of the environment to highlight the box in the top right, outlining what we're going to be doing with the network operations platform and highlighting the events and the metrics and the topology information that we are able to extract from the environment. This is a quick screenshot of the presentation layer of our metric output that we'll show in a demonstration coming up. We are showing the overall usage of the various layer two network links, as well as the utilization of the 400 gigabit wave service connection between cloud A and B. This is a view of the events that are generated from transport PCE module within the SDN controller for our environment. This is new to our experiments this time. In the past, we haven't been able to see the status of service requests for establishing light paths. We just had to wait for them to be complete and hope they complete. Now we're able to get visibility to the various steps as the service requests are happening. And we are also able to gather and collect inventory and connectivity information about the topology in our environment, including the, the build out of the racks and the chassis, as well as the connectivity information that we can update dynamically as the connectivity changes. This is a quick picture again of the environment that we are going to run this demo in, showing the data center A, data center B, two rotums, and the optics connect them together. So at this point, I'd like to switch over to the demo environment, demo mode here. So this is a, 
a live dashboard showing the representing the traffic going across various network links. And over here we have graphs showing the utilization in detail, more detail of those links. And in this window, I'm going to kick off a set of 10 tasks in parallel that will be distributed to these 10 client servers here that will talk to these 10 servers over here. And each of them is going to trans transmit 440 gigabits per second, aggregating at this aggregation switch to 400 across the wave service link. So let me, let me tick that off here. And we're starting them up three or four at a time, just so you can see the effect. The overall utilization of the wave service is still low. Our refresh interval of collecting these metrics is about seven seconds. So every second, seven seconds, we should get more information coming in. We can see the utilization starting to ramp up. And a couple of these ports have become active as the jobs are building up. At this point, we have kicked off all 10 jobs. And you can see the transmit rate greatly increasing. So we're about halfway to the maximum. Now we're at 240, 315, 368, 396.5. This is about as fast as it goes with the TCP overhead. So we are running 80 TCP streams spread across 10 servers, now moving 400 gigabits per second continuously over this wave service connection between the two data centers going across the optical link. And to wrap up the demo, let's uh, clean the environment up and stop all of those jobs. And we'll see how in, in a few moments these graphs will taper down and then the overall utilization of the service link will go back to zero. So I hope you enjoyed watching this, this demonstration of some of our new capability to control and receive real-time updates from the environment as far as metrics and events and look forward to sharing more with you at a future date. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for watching this video about the public demonstration of the latest open road and features and related use cases. The University of Texas at Dallas remains committed to assisting the open road initiative by being a neutral partner site where interoperability testing can be carried out from the optical physical layer all the way to the application layer. I'd like to sincerely thank the participating partners for contributing their technology expertise, vision, and funding. The next few slides provide the list of participating partners along with their contact information. Feel free to pause the video as needed.